A thumbs up. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to what is actually a, a special edition of our Facebook Live. This is our last meeting for two of our aldermen, and we will be talking about that here in a few minutes. But for right now, this is, uh, I'd like to call a meeting to order. This is our recess meeting of Tuesday, June the 15th. If you would, we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by um, invocation by Alderman Sistrunk and Moment uh, of Silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alderman Sistrunk. Let us pray. Eternal God, fount of wisdom, we ask you to bless our elected representatives, grant that through our discussions and decisions we may solve our problems effectively, enhance our well-being as a community, and achieve together a fairer and more united society. Amen. Thank you, everyone. All right, our first order of business will be um, Approval of the official agenda with consented items. Do I have any changes to the agenda? Alderman Carver, any changes from you? No, ma'am. Okay. Alderman Sister, any no, changes? No, ma'am. Alderman Little? No, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman Walker? No, ma'am. Alderman Beatty? No, ma'am. Thank you. Vice Mayor Carver? No, ma'am. Mayor, thank you. Alderman Vaughn. Man, what about this other set of minutes that we that we put by? Are they um, ready? The, Mr. Latimer says they're ready. Would you like to add them to the consent agenda? Yes, ma'am. Let's see if I have any objections. Any objections to adding the set of minutes that are not currently on consent to consent? Anyone? None. Okay. Uh, we will add those to the consent agenda. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Anything else? All right. Seeing none, uh, if you would, please, I need a motion for the approval of the official Move agenda room. with the consented items as as amended. I have a motion from Alderman Little. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Carver. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And with that, I will read the consented items. First, it's consideration of the minutes of the May 18, 2021 meeting of the Mayor and Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville. Consideration of the minutes of the May 28, 21, 2021 work session of the Mayor and the Board of Aldermen of the City of Starkville. Under Mayor's business, we have consideration of a form use license agreement to be administered by, C by CSP Sports Facility Management, LLC at Cornerstone Park. Number two is consideration of SFM pro forma pre-opening and first year budget management for and operation of Cornerstone Park. Under Department of Business, we have the airport request approval to purchase one ingenious Durafon phone system based with five combination phone walkie hand, handsets, plus one outside antenna and one lightning protector for the amount of $3,189.98 to be purchased with an FAA grant. Two is request approval to accept lower quote from Octibaha County Co-op in the amount of $16,900 for one Woods TBW144 turf batwing finish mower to be purchased with an FAA grant. Under community development, we have discussion and consideration of a special event request by Mississippi State Student Association to hold the 2021 Bulldog Bash on September 17, 2021 and have city participation with in-kind services. Under engineering, we have consideration of acceptance of the lower quote of $6,094.15 for the Maxwell Street sidewalk project from Avalia, Avalia Construction and authorizing the mayor to execute a construction contract. Two is consideration of acceptance of a lower quote of $9,500 for the Northside Drive Inlet Update Project from h and Construction and authorizing the mayor to execute a construction contract. Under finance administration, we have the acceptance of the May financial statements. Under human resources, we have request authorization to hire Molly Bayers as a permit services technician in the community development department. Number two is request authorization to hire Martin Hall and Hunter Coslow as entry-level firefighters and Austin Mask and Dylan Rockwell as certified firefighters in the Starkville Fire Department. Number three is request authorization to hire Jacoby Arrington, Jalen Brown, Charles Hogan, and DeRomeo Miller as maintenance workers in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. Number four, request authorization to hire Michael Hunt as a driver in the Sanitation and Environmental Services Department. Number five is request authorization to hire Ashley Boyd as a customer service representative in the Startwell Utilities Department. Under parks, we have request authorization to accept the lowest bid from Boyd Tree Service in the amount of $30,625 to trim 45 trees, remove 37 trees, and grind 37 stumps. 
Number two is request authorization to accept the change order for T&M steel erectors for the amount of $150,000 to add a hood vent to the main pavilion, including plumbing, mechanical, electrical, and access panels for plumbing chases in buildings and consultant fees. Under police, we have number one, requesting approval to allow eight start with police department supervisors to attend the burden of command training June the 29th through July the 1st, 2021, located in Lowndes County at a total cost of $1,200. B is requesting approval to allow Corporal Chris Gregory to attend field training officer certification June the 29th through July the 1st, 2021, located at Camp Shelby, Mississippi, at a cost of $480. C is request approval for the Starkville Police Department to apply for the fiscal year 21 OJJDP 100% reimbursable comprehensive youth violence prevention and reduction program. And D is request approval for the Starkville Police Department to apply for an 80-20 reimbursable grant Funding of the tw Fiscal Year 21 Department of Justice COPS Hiring Grant for the hiring of additional police officers. Under Utilities, we have number one, request authorization to accept the lowest bid for the construction of the Startle 161-69 KV primary substation renovations from Chancellor Inc. in the amount of $685,676. Number two is request authorization to accept the lowest and best bid for the substation control house from Modular Connections, LLC in the amount of $361,727 for the Startville 161-69 KV primary substation. Three is request authorization to purchase a four inch water meter set up from Central Pipe Supply, Inc., the sole source badger distributor in Mississippi in the amount of $5,123.05 for the Cornerstone Park project upon payment by contractor for meter purchase and tap installation. And that concludes our consent agenda items. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, sir. My pleasure. And then under Mayor's announcements and comments, which is the next thing on the agenda, I have the very um, distinct pleasure of saying thank you to two folks who have worked incredibly hard for the city over the last eight years. I was not privy to the first four years, but I did have the extreme pleasure of working with you for the last four years. And I want to thank both of you in, in uh, the strongest terms for the work that you did um, on behalf of the city. It's been it's been huge. I think we've made incredible strides in the things we've done and it, those are things that y'all should be very proud of when you when you leave us. But we're not going to let you leave us because we're going to be calling you and asking <laughs> you questions and do you remember this and do you remember that. But I do want you to know how much, how so very much we appreciate what y'all have done. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you truly. Um, the other thing I want to say it's Hail State. <laughs> I want to I want to highlight that the Diamond Dogs won Super Regional last night, and not only did we win it, but some of the stats that go with it are just amazing. We had forty thousand one hundred and forty people in this town who were at the game over the last three games, and that is the largest in NCAA history for a three-game tour. So that. For those of us who are excited about that from a game standpoint and we won, there are others of us who are excited about it because that is an economic development tool that is absolutely um, unmatchable anywhere else. So this is just an extraordinary thing for us. It's a wonderful thing for our community and we want to do more and more of it. So you know that is, that is in large part what we're trying to do with all of our weekends is have things like that going on in town. Clearly we can't have that magnitude of an event but we certainly enjoy it when we got it, and that is a, that's some history making. And just to add a cherry on top of that, apparently we also own the top five attendance records in all super regionals. Hmm. So, and the closest one is Arkansas, and they're our distant second. So, we love us some baseball, and we love Duty Noble, and we love being here. And so, it makes a difference to um, to our community. And I'm really proud of our community because. Every time I hear from people who have been here, what they say to me and what they say on social media is what a great place this was and how welcoming we were. Even when they lost, they were glad they were here and said they had a great experience. And I don't know, I don't know how much better it can be for a visitor to come in and say that about us. And that's who we want to be, and I think that's who we are. I think we're a great place to visit, and we want to always have people who feel good about being in town. So thank you for all who welcomed people to town and made them feel like this is home. So anyway, I wanted to say that. Um, and I also wanted to mention that we have a blood drive on South Lafayette um, on Thursday from 12 to 6. So they're going to be taking up a few parking spaces, but it is a, for a good cause. So there is a blood drive, South Lafayette, under the lights there, but it's from 12 to 6. So it's in the daylight, daytime, you won't see the lights. Um, and having said that, I think that's all I have to say. 
other than um, what I have said again about the about the gentleman with whom we have all served. So, um, Alderman Carver, anything from you? I just want to say congratulations to everyone who was certified today on the elections. I know well, other right. than there Ward, was, there uh, was well, <laughs> other than Ward uh, three and four, I want to stop and also reiterate what the mayor said. I just have enjoyed working with both of y'all. Uh, through the ups and downs of life and things like that. I've just got a great respect for you two gentlemen. Uh, David, I've worked with you a little bit longer. I just, uh, I would say that I just look up to you almost like a father figure at times. And you know, and I okay. talk and, and weekly and, and bi-weekly and uh, the things I've think, seen you go through in life, I just have a great deal of respect. Jason, I respect you tremendously as well. You've always been very level-headed. When things get tough in this board meeting, Jason is a as a very level-headed uh, individual who comes through and just presents the facts, and uh, I've always respected you for that. So to both of y'all, uh, and I say this again and again, anytime we go to a conference, people say, why is Stark so successful? And I said, because outside of this board meeting uh, at a conference or a continuing education or any kind of seminar, uh, we all speak and we're cordial and things like that. So I would enjoy it. Uh, I would just want to extend this opportunity to tell you that I have enjoyed working with both of y'all. Anything I can help you with in the future? Uh, the city of Strong will just please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Sister. I want to thank everybody who voted and participated in the democratic process that got the new board elected. Um, that's there, there should be more of us that are taking part in that, but um, I, I, I'm pleased that as many people came out and voted as did. Um, we'll have an opportunity to do it again, and I hope more people will take part next time. Um, I also want to thank all the people who ran for office. It, it's, not e it's not an easy thing to do, and I appreciate that level of civic engagement, too. Um, I, too, want to say thank you to David and Jason, Alderman Little and Alderman Walker. Um, it's, it's been a pleasure, and I, I think this has been a very productive term and I know that you will be missed next term. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Little. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. I'd just first like to say thank you to the uh, citizens of Ward 3 for putting their trust and confidence in me uh, eight years ago and allowing me uh, the privilege and honor of sitting up here and serving you, the citizens of Ward 3, along with the entire Startwell community. Um, it's been a pleasure working with all the department heads and the, all the city staff over the last several years. I've enjoyed getting to know each one of you. and. Um, to the board. I have enjoyed working with each one of you as well. Uh, I consider all of y'all friends and I'm um, going to miss you and appreciate the kind words, Mayor. And I'm going to be watching from a distance. <laughs> um, kudos to um, Jeffrey Rupp and Mike Brooks and their uh, new jobs, new roles as Alderman uh, next month. Uh, wish them the best. Um, and as Alderman Sistrunk said a moment ago, kudos to everyone that uh, ran. Uh, it's, it takes a lot to put your name out there. Uh, and go through that election process. It's, it's not an easy task. And uh, for the willingness to want to serve, I, I commend those that did. Um, Alderman Walker, I'm going to miss, miss you, but we'll figure something out to do on Tuesday nights. Right? <laughs> um, lastly, um, I, said, I, had, I, had, I forgot my blacking out. I had one thing to say, and I forgot what it was. Um, but as Miss Dorothy Isaacs said, uh, I'm going to be watching. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be watching. You know, if I need to come up here, I will come up here. She used to tell us oh routinely. So thank you. All right. Thank you. Alderman Walker. Uh, I, everything that Alderman Little just said is uh, my exact sentiments. It's been a privilege and a pleasure and an honor to represent War for the last eight years. And the, the folks that uh, came out and voted for me and put me in a position of trust to make good decisions on their behalf and on behalf of all, all the citizens of Starville. It's been a, it has been a, a, it's been a great eight years. I've learned a tremendous amount. I've met a whole lot of people that I might not have otherwise uh, been associated with from city staff and the department heads and all the people that work so hard to make our city go um, is, is really uh, the, the backbone of what this community is about is the hard workers and the people that are dedicated every day to doing the best that they can for Starkville. And so it's been, it's been my pleasure uh, to get a better understanding of, of what they have to do and what the expectations are on a day-to-day -day basis. Working with the members of this board and the previous board and the previous mayor and our current mayor has been just an absolute pleasure. Um, we haven't always agreed on everything and that's how government's supposed to work. Um, but we have always tried to talk through things and try to always do what's in the, what we believe is in the best interest of the, the community at large. 
And that's what government's so, supposed to be. And so I, I agree. Congratulations for everybody to be reelected. Congratulations and kudos for all the people that chose to, to get involved and run for, for office. It is not easy. Um, it is not easy going around and, and doing that and to want to serve. And I hope that those people that uh, chose to run and were unsuccessful will still find a way to get involved. Uh, we have a lot of boards and commissions um, that would be great opportunities for people to get involved and still have your voice uh, heard as, as part of the, of the city. Um, so uh, it's been a pleasure. I look forward to, uh, like Alderman Little said, watching and making sure that uh, everything is going to go just fine. And I think we're in fine hands. I think the, the newly elected board is going to continue to do a great job for the city. So I have nothing but, uh, uh, nothing but positive <coughs> thoughts that moving forward for the city. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Alderman Baby. Alderman Little, Alderman Walker, um, thank you for your service to our city for your experience and good judgment. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you. Um, thank you for making tough decisions when they need to be made. They weren't necessarily popular, but it was the thing, right thing to do for the city. And thank you, sir. Uh, uh, you, you've been people, you're both people of integrity, and you, you only, you've only had this, the city start with the best interest at heart. It's been a pleasure to serve you. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I just want to address two points tonight. Uh, the first point I want to address is I want to um, uh, specifically thank the um, gentleman from uh, Ward 3, the Honorable David Little, and the gentleman from Ward 4, the Honorable Jason Walker. They, uh, for the last eight years, have individually served uh, with honor and distinction. Um, the city is... Um, definitely much better off now than we were before you arrived. So we want to thank you for your uh, commitment, uh, your dedication, and your uh, working so untiringly. And you always have exemplified extraordinary interest in all city matters. So we are going to absolutely miss both of you. And um, we know that um, you're going to continue to be fully successful, uh, Alderman Lill and Alderman Walker, in all of your endeavors. And it's been a very um, high honor for the Vice Mayor to um, serve with each of you. And I appreciate all of your support. And lastly, um, you have um, served uh, your individual award with such a high level of distinction. So. Um, Again, we're going to miss you, and I have certainly um, enjoyed every moment of this service with you. So I um, pray that God will bless each and every one of you. Uh, lastly, um, Mayor, I want to add uh, on to um, the uh, Mississippi State University baseball. And um, so I mentioned to the mayor on Saturday, and um, and last evening that, you know, I have not watched baseball this year. But um, Mississippi State baseball team has played with a such high level of intensity, it'll make you watch. Um, I watched the first game primarily, and, and I watched the, um, the game on yesterday. And, and the commitment was there. As Jack Crystal said, um, they wrapped it up in maroon and white. <laughs> um, all of the players just did such a magnificent job. It was such a very profound team effort. Even as, uh, Mayor, you know, I learned more about our number 23, Landon Sim, the superstar closer. <laughs> I mean, he is um, he's phenomenal, sending one of the nation's most powerful home run hitters, a 22, to the dugout um, game one on the ballot at the batter box and last night with the, with two men on that double play. And we're just so proud of, of that MSU um, record setting for the super regional attendance with I think the number is 14,385 on that, on that Sunday night. 
And as the mayor said, I don't have to articulate that. I'm just so excited about the team because I, I never watched the baseball team all the Walker. I just got there. I just got, I, I had a high level of interest, just like a child is at Christmas time. I, I, I had a high level of interest in, in all the fans as they came. And, and that benefits all of our Starkfield family growth, business, shopping, economic development, revenue. They're going to come back again and all of the national and international attention on Starkville, Mississippi. We're on ESPN, ladies and gentlemen. Anderson Cooper was probably watching it. We'll bless him. <laughs> so that was a high moment, Mayor. I, I, I just had to say that. You know my, my level of, of what I saw. Um, you know, I had to say that. So, uh, But last, as I go to my seat, gentlemen from three, thank you. Gentlemen from four. Thank you. We're going to miss you. Mayor, I yield. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Vice Mayor. Mayor. Alderman Thank you, Mayor. David, Jason, I got y'all phone number. <laughs> I got you. With the decision, some of the things that we've gone through to achieve and accomplish what we accomplished, we couldn't have done it without you. David, we couldn't have done it without you. Jason, was your land use mine to take us so far we don't have to, didn't have to fumble and grumble, whatever. Jason decided that's what we got mm -hmm. because he had that expertise, he had that knowledge and just helped the city to grow as much as it did. And I, we can't thank you enough for that. The whole city of Star, we can't thank you enough for that because you got a almost $30, 30 million dollar baseball complex down there that you, you tweet it here and there, tweet it here and there, we need this, we don't need that. We took your advice on a lot of those things, David. I mean, Jason, a lot of, lots of things, a lot of decisions that developers want to do, we took your advice, we took your changes, and it was for the better of, of Starville. It wasn't just for you. It was best for what Starville was looking for and what Starville needed. And the city of Starville can't thank you enough for those eight years that you shared with us. And David, you know I'm always going to miss you because you and I are just like that. We got to have a personal reason. But I got your number right here. I'm like, I'm, I'm, what, you, what you say, dog, I say, I'll be watching, I'll be calling y'all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alderman All right. And I, I was neglectful in, in not mentioning all the folks who did uh, come out and vote because that is, that is such a critical thing for us to do. And we, we continue to be um, not as good about it as we should. And so... Anytime we can encourage people to vote, we please should do that. And I look forward to serving with all of you who are here who are going to stay and our two new aldermen who will be joining us on July the 6th, which is when we will be sworn in. So I was also told to remind everyone who's going to be sworn in to bring a Bible. Because the last time we did this, we had a few that were missing. So bring, bring your Bible. Judge, did I, is that all right with you? Okay, she reminded me to tell you all that. Uh, Judge Kelly will be swearing, will be swearing soon. So, um, all right. Next, we have citizens' comments. Anyone who wishes to come speak to the board, you have three minutes in which to do so. Uh, we generally do not respond for any kind of back and forth conversation, but we get to listen to what your concerns are or your interests are. Mr. Turner, good evening. Good, good evening to the mayor, board. My name is Alvin Turner, Ward 7. To the mayor, to the police chief, to the fire chief to the, uh, yeah, uh, I'm a member of the NACP. Uh, citizens, we are scared to death that these scooters, some, someone going to get hurt first and last. Um, uh, without a helmet on, or uh, you hit the concrete or you hit the asphalt, it's, it's not going to deal. Uh, we say we're so afraid that it's getting warm now, and in the just a matter of time, that uh oh, I'm sorry, it's not gonna help. All uh, right, we also uh, me as me as well as my church member, if the if, if, if the fire chief can let us know what happened to our church member on one one twelve first year street, she was a member of it, but then. Better than Missionary Baptist Church, uh, it'll give the church and myself closure if we can find out what happened. Um, 
uh, a restraining order uh, is getting the time of the year that people get caught in the wrong situation. And uh, uh, knowing what a restraining order is, all right, it helps out a lot. And um, that just some concerns us. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else? Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Hello, how y'all doing today? Mr. Thompson. Good. My name is uh, Christopher Thompson. I want to first of all say to the mayor, to the vice mayor, to the board, I want to echo what you all just said about Alderman Luther and Alderman Walker. Alderman Luther, I want to thank you for your service for this city and and even in one of your darkest times, I, you still can push forward. And it's a motivation to me. I know it's to this board and to this city to say, hey, thank you for the work you put inside you. these eight years. Thank you, Chris. And to my Alderman for Ward 4, show go mission now because I, you know many times I have watched these board meetings and I have seen the way you think about things and the way you analyze the data. And I learned that public, administ public administration is this thing of trying to figure out what's best for the whole community. In each woman, in each woman, I heard seeing you sit back in that chair, think about each way to go. So I want to thank you for your hard time, your hard work, your hard dedication to the city of Starkville and to everyone else who will be serving these next four years. Thank you. Another uh, item I want to talk about is going to be for the board business and discussion to item two, the bird, the band bird scooters. I understand that the scooters have been causing the problems across the city of Starkville. And one thing I can say is what Alderman Walker said during the time, during the work session meeting. He said, instead of us banning this whole thing all together right now, how about we just take a step back and try to meet with, meet with the uh, business and meet with, and y'all have a meeting with, with them as well. And we talk about these things that, are, that the citizens are, are, are worrying about. The problem with no heaven on, the problem with going in a row in front of a car, the problem with them, with them being left on the sidewalk incorrectly. So I believe that instead of us completely banning this thing right now, we should, if it, if it means, we should place a temporary ban on, on the bird schools and say, hey, until we can get a good grip, some good regulations around this scooter, let's ban them for now. But that does not mean that we're gonna unban y'all soon. Because my fiance talked about last night how she went to Memphis with, uh, and they had these scooters as well. But at nighttime, how Mr. Walker said, you are able to, to ride them because at nighttime, they automatically shut off. So I just believe that that's the board and that's the mayor. Maybe one day we should, y'all should get together and sit down with the business and say, hey, we want you in Starville, but at the same time, you got to follow these regulations. But thank y'all for your time. Y'all have a good day. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chris. Thompson. All right, anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Anyone else? All right, seeing none, I will close it as under citizen comments. We have no public appearance this, e this evening. We do have a, one public hearing. This will be our third public hearing with consideration of an ordinance to establish a juvenile curfew and truancy law. And I have uh, asked Judge Quarles to be here this evening, so I'm going to give her a little bit of time. Um, she was unable to make it to our work session on Friday. So, Judge Quarles, if you don't mind, would you come up, please? If you have something you'd like to share with us. That'd be great. Um, and if not, I got some questions to lead you off. So, Well, um, board, I just want to tell you that I'm in support of the curfew ordinance, um, both the evening curfew and the truancy part of it. Um, I just learned last Wednesday that um, I've got 89 new truancy cases that are going to come up soon and and I already have um, 41 set on my truancy day already so I'll be probably doing another couple of truancy days right before we go back to school um, our problem as I see it just looking at at the people who come before me our problem is that we have children who walk around in the middle of the night and they don't break into cars. They just open doors. They're never going to break into a car. It's just too easy to open a door. 
And that's bad enough, but they often take out one or more guns, and that is not good at all. Um, I think that if we have a curfew, we can curtail the amount of juveniles who are out there going from car to car in a neighborhood or in an apartment complex, and if we can curfew them, if we can get them off of the street, then they're not going to find as many guns. And I think that that is something that could really, really help us. We know that, um, or you know, I mean, we, we all watch the TV. <laughs> and um, we got a lot of guns out there uh, in the hands of young people. And young people are wonderful, but they're not adults. And sometimes they don't reason too good. And that's what causes problems. So I'm very much in favor of this curfew. I think it would help. Uh, and I think I've talked to Chief Ballard about it. He thinks it would help. And um, I really hope you seriously consider it. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Alderman Carver. And while I've got you uh, at the pedestal, at the mic, what are your recommended hours if you were to have a perfect world? What would you think? Uh, we've discussions between 11 or midnight to 5 a.m. What are your recommended hours? And then what else can we do for you as a board other than this curfew? Well, I'd say 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'm kidding. <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I would think maybe 11, but I do realize that especially when school is going on and there are parties and ball games and things like that, that that's probably a little too early. But I would think that... Um, 12 to 5. The, the, the juveniles who get picked up usually get picked up around 2 and 3. So, I mean, that's the, I think that's the premium hour for going out and checking on cars. So I think anything that would cover that kind of early, early morning would be effective. What is your biggest thing that we can do as a board, uh, just as a city, a, a one of your many tools? We'll say the juvenile curfew is one. What can we do as a board? And I've heard a lot of discussions from a district attorney's office standpoint, different things like that. What can we do to further help you? Well, one of the things that um, I've talked about with the mayor, um, just because I was um, this consulate, but um, it costs a lot of money to put a child in juvenile detention. It costs $175 a day. That's a lot of money. The maximum time that I can give a juvenile is 90 days. Well, that's $12,000 right there. Um, can I ask, you know, at 90 days, they're basically just turned back out? You, you can't keep them anymore? Okay. No. Okay. I, can, I can do it if they, if they, if they have another charge. Yes, ma'am. You know, I can do it, but uh, 90 days. And here's the other thing, Alderman Carver. Um, you can't put a kid in detention unless you determine that he is a danger to himself or others um, and that there is no other thing that you can do for this juvenile that could possibly help to rehabilitate him. So I'm pretty much of the opinion that for sure when there are gun charges, they need to go to detention. And there's some other things that, that they need to go to detention for. But it's real expensive to keep kids in detention, and yet I, I hear from people in the street that they want to get these kids with guns off the street. So um, I think that uh, the mayor had been talking to Judge Kaiser because Lowndes County has a juvenile detention center. We do not. And for us to get one, which I would love, would cost us about $11 million, and we're not going to do that. You know, let's just be honest. So if we could have some set beds so that I would know that if I got a call at 2 o'clock in the morning from the chief or from Captain Watson and he said, I've got a kid with guns, that I could say, okay, take him to Lowndes County and know that I have a bed there, I mean, that'd be great. What we have to do now is say, okay, we'll try to get them to get their parents back, you know, at 10 o'clock in the morning and we'll call around and see if we can find a detention center they'll take. So that's, that's kind of difficult. And, and 
Columbus has had the same problem that Lee has had. They, um, it takes a lot to staff a juvenile detention center. You gotta have a nurse, you gotta have a teacher, you gotta have a psychologist, you know, you gotta have just regular old folks. And, you know, that's expensive. So, um, if we could get to a situation where I knew that I could tell anybody, just take them over to Columbus. You know, it's a 20 minute drive and, and they're there and I don't have to worry about where I'm gonna find them to get them there. Then, you know, when we send someone to detention, we can only hold them for 48 hours without having a detention hearing. But if I could get them over there for two days and then bring them back for a detention hearing, uh, you know, to me, that'd be terrific. So that's kind of what I'm, what I'm hoping we can do. What is your recommended time frame on this juvenile curfew? Do you su also suggest a one year or six month or? I suggest one year, but that's simply because I don't think that, I mean, I'm gonna be keeping statistics. I think the Chiefs will be keeping statistics. They're not gonna be the same. Um, Captain Watson's gonna be keeping statistics, but I think that we're gonna to have to have a year before we know whether we're doing any good or not. Sure. That's my thought. Anything we can help you with, just let us know as a board. Thank you. Um, obviously, it's been pushed to a forefront recently. Yeah. Um, been statewide news. I've just recently at, at the ball game this weekend are, still, are hearing a thread around statewide talking about the violence in Storkel. Um, I know there's push with the university and the legal system out there and things like that, but just it, it, something has to, be, has to be done. And I appreciate you, where you're at, and, and what you're doing to address it, and the chief and everybody involved. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Um, Alderman Sistrunk, anything? Yes, um, I, I agree with almost everything you said. And I think that um, the, the key for us is to try to find a way to break this cycle, uh, to intervene and to rehabilitate. Um, the, the goal is not to imprison people, although right. there are some people for whom that's a successful outcome. Some some citizens think that would be a successful outcome. Our, our goal is to um, get these kids to a point where they are better citizens than, than when they found their way into our system. I, I know that we are in the process of beginning to have our budget talks and the mayor has been talking with the, the folks over in Columbus and we hope to have some resolution to do um, a bed guarantee over there so that we do know that we have beds available. And that, that I think makes your job a, a lot easier knowing that you, you have that access. Um, I, 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 I want us to, to, as a board, to continue to monitor throughout this year, which seems to be where we're pointed to in terms of a term for the curfew, to monitor it and see what kind of results we're having, um, whether the outcomes are, are, are justifiable for the infringement on um, individual situations. But I appreciate what you do, and I'm glad that we are working toward a solution where, where we can do more than pick somebody up and then release them right back out into, into a bad situation. So. Well, Alderman Sistrock, you know, uh, if it's a 60-day curfew, if it's a 90-day curfew, if it's mm -hmm. a six-month curfew, I mean, we'll keep the statistics. Absolutely. Anyway. I'll do that. Uh, I just think we would have a better overall thought because we're going into summer and... It is seasonal. It, yes. it is seasonal and, um, you know, in, in the middle of winter, we really don't have as many as we do in the fall and the spring and the mm -hmm. summer. But we've got folks who I think um, make some money off of this. I'm sure it's a job. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, but whatever time limit, we'll keep statistics. I know the chief will too. And um, I believe the county is uh, gonna have a year for theirs, which is very similar to ours, except I don't think they have the truancy aspect. But. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll all be keeping stats so that you can look at it and see if it's worth it. If it's not worth it, we, we certainly don't need to be doing it. Exactly, exactly. So so we'll monitor, you'll help us monitor, oh, and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see where we are in a year. So. Thank you. On a little? Well, thank you for your comments, Judge. Appreciate it. Thank you. On a walk? Ma'am, thank you for your service. Judge, thank you for your service. Thank, thank you. Your comments. Vice Mayor Perkins? No comment, Mayor. Thank you. Oh, no. Yes, ma'am. 
uh, what about the county, Octavio County, Lyons County, Clay County? Is all of them going to be have a curfew going just like we will in the city of Starve and the city of West Point? And, Octavio County does have a curfew now. They put one on at their last meeting, last meeting. from 12 to 5. So, when I said Lyons County, Clay County, because if we put a curfew on that, they would flow it out of city. And so that's, I'm just wondering, are they going to have a curfew too? Have we checked to see, are they going to have a curfew? I have not inquired. Chief Ballard, have you asked the other counties? Um, Chief Shelton's at the uh, conference, but right now there's no implications that they're going to be And on the, they, like us, have had uh, board, more board changes, I think, so it may very well be. They've had uh, mayor, mayoral changes, so it may very well be not something they'll take up right now, but they, they may at some point, but I'm not, uh, other than the pandemic time, I don't know that I've had uh, Mayor Smith check with me on that or, or uh, the CAO, David Armstrong, talk to me, nor Mayor Robinson. So um, I don't know that they're contemplating it differently. Of course, they have a different community than we do. Thank you, Ms. Quarter. I'm, I'm in favor of it anyway, though. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. You know, we get some of theirs. <laughs> yeah, we do. And, and we can pick them up here. It'd be nice if they picked them up in West Point before they got here, but, you know, whatever. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, just, to be, just to be clear, guys, um, one of the things that uh, was referenced was um, I, I came to, uh, I, I tried to get all of the um, counties together at the Golden Triangle Planning and Development District. There's seven counties there with the thought that perhaps we might have a regional facility. And when we were in the throes of having that discussion, uh, Lowndes County, Judge Kaiser was there and she spoke up and said, we have, or I said, you have six beds. And she said, yes, we have six beds. And, and she said, well, we really have 22 beds, but we can't use them. And so I'm, <laughs> I went, oh, wow, okay, great. Well, let's see what we can do to use them. And so the answer is, you know, if they can't staff to it because it's a funding issue, then perhaps, as um, Judge Quarles was saying, we can do like we do with Octomaha County, which is to reserve and pay for an annualized number of beds for X amount of dollars. Now, they're, they're charging $175 a night, which is an astronomical price, but if we guarantee them a year of beds, then perhaps that cost will go down significantly and we can then afford to do so. Now, to be perfectly frank and full disclosure, the city has never participated dollar-wise with the county in this because it's a county obligation. But when they are city children, it strikes me that this is a reasonably fair way for us to approach it and uh, participate in that cost. So I have asked Alderman Sistrunk to look at that as we go into this next budget year to see how we might share in some of the costs that are associated with that if we can uh, make those arrangements with uh, Supervisor Hairston and Judge Kaiser and the Lowndes County Board. So we will we will work toward that. But that's just to kind of give you the background of that. But they're all down on the coast right now, so haven't been able to get up with any of them. So we will we will pursue that next week when they get back. And we've talked a little bit to the to the county. Um, it's it's really their responsibility, you know. But y'all are I think a little better funded. You're not better funded. Oh, well, I, you know, I, 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 maybe you're more interested. I'm hoping that um, that the county would be interested in this, and we could have like you know four beds. But if only the city does it, and I really hope you do. And we only have two beds. There won't be any county kids in your beds. They'll just all be city kids. So. All right. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate you being here and, and taking the time to do that. So um, unless you have something further for us, we appreciate your presence. I was going to ask you, Mayor, when yes, you said sir. you went to that county meeting, I meant to ask you this in the last meeting, has there been any kind of consensus building or something where maybe all three counties have talked about having a, I know in the COVID situation we have issues, it's curfews tend to best, work best when they're, you know, jurisdiction or regional wide, but how do you, did you get any kind of consensus from Lowndes or Clay County and what they feel about a juvenile curfew or are they we, having even some of the same It issues? wasn't a conversation that we had when we were all together. All we were talking about at that time was the detention facility and if we needed yes, to fund it. But that's certainly a conversation we could have. And again, their leadership has changed. The number of their board members have changed. So that will be an opportunity to discuss that and let them get their feet underneath them. Yeah, I know a lot of these violent crimes, just the shootings the other night in the Cotton District behind uh, St. Joe Catholic Church, I always, I always feel questions. Uh, these aren't juveniles, and these are not from Starkville. And so we've got other issues at hand. I tell people all the time, they say, well, uh, you know, man, I'm surprised you support a uh, juvenile curfew. And I said, well, you know, it's just it's, it's one tool in the tool belt. 
Um, it's not a complete tool belt. I think um, anytime I will support this tonight, I'll say that, but I think that we have bigger issues at hand. I think a lot of our crime comes from out of towners and they come here and uh, maybe, you know, if you drive great distances to get to Strawby, you understand that maybe you will be allowed to loiter and you will be allowed to create situations which are uh, hazardous to life. So we've got other things, you know, at hand, obviously Chief and I talk almost daily about these things, but I think this is one tool in the tool belt. I don't think it's a permanent tool. I think there's something we'll look back in a year and go, hey, did this work? Did it not work? Until you try it, you don't have statistics and data. So uh, we want to put some quantitative numbers with it. I personally want to push for it and uh, see what happens. So I'll okay. support it. Thank you, sir. Um, you, sir. Again, thank you, Judge. Thank you. Appreciate it. Chief, anything you want to add before I open it as a public hearing? Uh, the, the, oh, you have, that's right. I'm sorry. You have the PowerPoint. Let's go ahead and do your PowerPoint, and then we'll open it as a public hearing. All right. So uh, this is the beginning of the slide. We were asked to update the uh, uh, PowerPoint here. And uh, so this is what we're looking at for 2020, 2021, and this is an upgrade. Again, a review from the burglaries that the curfew would be looking to address, and specifically the firearms that are stolen um, from 2018 to 2019. Uh, stolen firearms uh, as of June 14th, uh, 44, I think our uh, uh, previous number was um, 35 uh, at the last presentation. There we go. So since May 13th, uh, uh, to talk about an ongoing and continual process, a continual threat to the community. Uh, we are 20 reports of auto burglaries, nine stolen firearms uh, since the last uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, so with that being uh, said, uh, it, again, uh, back on the question where, where we're seeing the peak hours, not the absolute, but the peak hours, the core of the activity, uh, we're seeing in the midnight 4 a.m. range. Um, and that's the narrow and scope approach that we're looking to address with our auto burglaries. Um, and that's where, again, not all the auto burglaries are being committed by uh, juveniles, but a significant group is and a uh, significant bunch is. And uh, we know this, again, from confessions, uh, uh, phones, uh, uh, you know, videos uh, and evidence. Um, and again, as far as the real um, threat, I think the frustrating thing is to go back on kind of some of the commentary that Alderman Walker had brought up. I think the difference between adults and juveniles is the juveniles are being uh, with a system like this. Uh, a child has is, is got a lot uh, to overcome when they're in an environment. Uh, where it is not structured, where it is uh, perhaps system failures all the way around to include dysfunctionality, um, maybe uh, within their community, maybe in where uh, the parental uh, applications are, uh, or just bad influences. And so 10 is a number that is, uh, to me, and I think to many people, is a uh, uh, tragic number uh, for the crime that we've been responsible again. Look at the number of stolen firearms that we've had onto the street. And we've done nothing year after year after year. So this application and moving forward is to help us to have a tool, not the tool, a tool to help try to measure and see if we can get restrictions on the firearms that are going on the street being used in violent applications. Um, and again, a lot of the violent crime that we have seen that are juvenile related uh, and adult have been stolen firearms. Um, so, uh, and a lot of these adults are utilizing the juveniles in a manner uh, to get stolen firearms because uh, of uh, the way that laws and statutes are set up. Um, and so that was a brief review, uh, basically the same presentation, um, just that since that time we've had 20 additional auto burglaries. Uh, with those nine additional stolen weapons. Thank you, Chief. Go back Did two slides. I was going to see a statistic. I 100 percent. No, one more. Go back. Down. Nope. Every weapon recovered in these crimes. 100 percent of these crimes were either possessed. The guns were possessed illegally or have been reported stolen from an auto burglar. 
Well, that's because they're either in possession by a child that should not have them, and we'll get the, the exact numbers, I guess, on the wording there, or the weapon has been stolen. So, you know, I know when you get into math, anytime you get 100% of anything, that's a humongous, that's a red flag. So that's all I, I, I couldn't read that when you were. I apologize. Really quick, thank you. That's right. Um, Chief, does that include, I, I was under the impression that we had some more going on last night. I had a friend who reported that she, her neighborhood had been um, the victim of having some folks go through last night. So, and, it, all, and Detective Lay is going, yes. Yes, <laughs> so, yeah, elder burglary yeah. is um, nightly, and it's not just juveniles from store. Uh, you many times will have individuals come in from the same that we see the preponderance of from other communities that come in for heavier level crime. You will have juveniles occasionally. Why? Because the advancement of large complexes, large numbers of cars, a transitional community where not a lot of people might not know each other, where you can blend in and go. Uh, these are things that auto burglary for year after year after year, for as long as I've been law enforcement here has been the leading felony for the Starkville Police Department. The irony of this, folks, and, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do a public service announcement because we're wanting to word it in such a way to it not be threatening and catch your attention. But the irony of this is that all you have to do is lock your car. I mean, this is not hard. Just lock your car. When you get out, lock your car. And the lady who was telling me this said, well, I didn't lock my car, but I didn't have anything in it. But apparently, somebody didn't lock their car in her neighborhood, and there was a gun. So just lock your car. This is not a this is not a difficult concept. So anyway, all right. Well, thank you, Chief. I appreciate I, it. I think it's tough because you and I and probably most everybody on this board drives into a garage. Would you agree or not agree? And there's well, a lot of time. But I get out on this, every time I get out of my vehicle, I will I will lock my car. I know, but I, I just say some of these individuals they, they're younger, and as uh, Judge Coral is saying, they don't make, have sound reasoning all the time. And I know when I was young, I. When you're in an apartment complex, that's a whole other issue. I, I hear all the time from county law enforcement officers, I wish y'all would annex every apartment building we have because that's 90% of our calls are in an apartment complex. I've tried moratoriums twice on this board to not allow any more large comp apartment complexes in Starville. That's probably the majority of your calls. Would you agree or not agree? As, as far as when they hit, that's where the numbers roll up for not only auto burglary, but for burglary during holiday season when our population returns back home those those generate a lot of numbers the so complex i agree with that so what i'm saying from a policy standpoint if you're going to do a psa you need to really target large apartment complexes that's when individuals can go in there and they check 30 or 40 i know you've seen video of this they check 30 or 40 or 50 handles in a matter of minutes it's not like they're going to greenbrier or oh, you know they're not checking 50 you can't check 50 handles in greenbrier it's behind locked you know garage doors so if you're going to do a psa i would specifically target those owners of those large apartment complexes of you've got a 10 o'clock I don't know that's what I was asking you last week can you use an emergency broadcast system geofence people within those 10 o'clock every night they get a text that says hey lock your car doors it's common sense for you and I but for an 18 year old kid they might need help well we can ring them during the board meeting and ask <laughs> no I'm asking I mean it's, it's, it's our problem so. yes but a, a public service announcement is a public service announcement so you tend to want to hit as many people as you can in doing that so yes there's probably some way to do that but we're still in the exploratory phase that was what I was that's all I was trying to say so anyway okay all right thank you chief very much I appreciate it and thank let you. me open it as a public oh I'm sorry you want to speak to the chief while he's here okay well I just want to touch on duration real quick because yeah. okay. we've heard a year time frame and things like that right now the way the ordinance is written there's not a specific time for duration because the law requires these check-ins and so the way the ordinance is written, if the board passes it tonight, the chief will come back in a month and give us an update, just like he did tonight, on what the, the stats are showing in a month, and then he reports back on the quarter. So I would just say, if the board's inclined to adopt the ordinance, adopt it as written, and let the data drive how long y'all want it to be in existence. Okay, thank you. All right, again, thank you, chief. And I'll, I will take this opportunity to open it as a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak to this matter, now is the opportunity to do so. You're welcome to come up and uh, we'll have 15 minutes on either side, either for or against. Mr. Turner. Good evening to the board. Um, my name is Al Turner. Um, the generation that we got now, they don't bleed try hard until we get their attention. Every, 
they gonna think that uh, people are something to play with until somebody gets shot. Because if a person see you in their vehicle, and this will be a free country, it gonna be consequences. All right, and doing something now is better than waiting till somebody gets shot or get killed because of someone being ignorant. The Bible said, Thou shalt not steal. But it said that the parents now are younger and they're scared of the children that they bring in the world. It said, Train up the child. Uh, been the South and Wild Young. We got to get back to the basics. All right. It'll be sad that the children start whooping the pants because we will not get their attention. It's time to get their attention. Don't care who get mad. It, it, it rather that you get mad and you living, then our, uh, you deceased. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Turner. Anyone else wishing to speak either for or against? Either for or against the curfew. All right, seeing none, I will close it as a public hearing, and we have had a good bit of discussion, but um, we can certainly have some more. Is there a motion to... Um, Move approval. Okay, I have a motion with the ordinance as it is in front of us, yes, correct? Yes, All right, I have a motion from Alderman Carver to um, approve the ordinance establishing a juvenile curfew and truancy law. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Vaughn. All right, any further discussion from anyone? I'll see, look for a show of hands. None? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. It is unanimous. The motion carries. And does the ordinance include an uh, immediate effective? Okay. So this this ordinance will become effective immediately based on the unanimity of this vote. So, all right. Thank you very much. And what are the exceptions for a juvenile to be traveling within those hours? Is it sporting events and... I don't want those. Please yeah. do. There's about 10 exceptions, Alderman Carver, and I can speak to them very quickly. Thank you. One, if you're accompanied by a parent. Two, if you're accompanied by an adult who, who's been authorized by the parent. Three, for 45 minutes, to or from work. Four, if you're coming from any school activity or religious activity or other big public entertainment. In other words, let's say the Super Regional ran long and it lets out. You get... Uh, 30 minutes to get home from the Super Regional, even if it was like 1.10 a.m. Six is reasonable necessity. Seventh is First Amendment rights. Eight is travel, bona fide travel through the city, somebody passing through town on the city's highways or road access systems. Uh, nine, any type of uh, Mississippi compulsory school attendance law exception that's set out in the school statutes that you can miss school for and 10, any bona fide case of emergency. Thank you. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next under Mayor's Business we have, and this is one of those times when I apologize to everyone for putting something out after the agenda has already been established, but in, in this case we have uh, an authorization to advertise for an assistant city clerk in the city clerk finance and administration department. And let me take this one because one of the things that um, I have been trying to make sure that we do is set up a succession plan for all of our departments so that we have someone, and I use the uh, analogy, and, and Ms. Harden, bless her heart, put up, puts up with me when I say, what if you get hit by a bus? And so, you know, on, all of us have some vulnerability about what may or may not happen to us and make us uh, unavailable to do our job. In this case, we need someone who is the go-to person. It's, uh, it's true of the police department, it's true of the fire department, it's true of any of our departments to know who we go to if something happens to the person who is our department head. And so this is a part of what we were uh, attempting to do. And so that's the reason for this particular um, item to come before you because Ms. Harden carries a lot of responsibility both as the city clerk and as the CFO. And as such, uh, I think it's important that we have someone prepared to fill her shoes and this in you know this allows for that advertisement but it also it, anyone who is in the city can certainly um, apply for the job but we want to want to post it as an assistant city clerk which is a somewhat new um, position so mr. Ashford do you have anything you'd like to add to that okay thank you so um, 
again, my apologies for bringing it forward late, but I did want um, I did want to mention the rationale behind it, and, and I want to do that with each and every one of our departments. So just just a discussion point. So any any questions, Alderman Vaughn? I'll start down, down at your end. No, oh, Mayor, Mayor, thank you. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor. No, oh, Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Beatty. Thanks, good idea. Okay, thank you, Alderman Walker. No, Ma'am, and I move approval. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I have a I have a motion from Alderman Walker. Do I have a second? Second. Second, uh, second from Alderman Sistrong. Okay, thank you, uh, Alderman Luke. Just one. Uh, is this a budgeted item already that we have in our budget, or just something? Well, position. I know it's a new position, but is there a city clerk position that's open? Yes. Well, we have payroll. Payroll. Uh, yes. Thank you. Payroll. We, we remember we had an adjustment, um, one moving to utilities mm -hmm. to do payroll there. So, so. that's where I'm okay. okay. Alderman Sistra. And this this is not the same as appointing the successor for the city clerk. No. Um, it, that it, if and when she she departs her role as city clerk CFO, that would be a separate advertisement and a separate interview process. Yeah. This yes. Oh, absolutely. This is this is the opportunity to have someone who is um, going to be able to handle it if something were to happen. But were Ms. Harden decide to move to Panama City and lay on the beach, we would certainly be advertising for her position again. So it is not it's not that. Mr. Carver. No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you so much. And the next one is um, Ms. Ann Welch. As y'all are aware, um, Emily Corbin Camp, who is our current assistant city planner, is leaving. She is going to, um, she's had recently had a baby. We're happy for her. And she is going to uh, go. Um, be in the cotton district for a while. So this this is a this is someone who is uh, interviewed with. Um, she she was interviewed by Mr. Haviland and Ms. Corbin and Mr. Ashford. I have visited with her and she is um, currently working for the Carl Small Town Center. So she has a good background and she is interested in getting back into city planning, which was her um, apparently first love. And so um, she has applied for the job, and I think everyone's comfortable. Who did the interview? That she is a she's a good fit. So that's that's why this is coming to you at this at this point in time. Approval. I have a motion from Alderman Walker. Do I have a second? Second. Second from Alderman Little. Any discussion? Looking for a show? None. All right. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. All right. Next we have uh, <clears throat> excuse me consideration of resolution of the mayor and the board. This is the this is the TIF item and it's somewhat technical. So, um, Mr. Latimer, do you have any? And, and um, Mr. Um, Castleberry is in the audience. So, if we have anything we need to ask him questions about, with Mr. Latimer, from a technical standpoint, would you like to share? Sure. The TIF documents allow an assignment of interest under the development agreement, and so this is exactly what that is proposed to be. Castle Starkwell LLC, the current developer is attempting and wants the board to approve his assignment of interest to Triangle Crossing LLC. The way the documents read, the board just has to approve that assignment of interest. So we talked about the value of the TIF, the percentage of pledging, things like that. None of that changes. It's just the assignment of the interest to the new entity, Triangle Crossing LLC. And we asked Mr. Castleberry to be here to tell y'all, you know, who Triangle Crossing LLC is if you want to hear it and to get some kind of reasonable uh, satisfaction and confidence that they should be the assignee. Mr. Castleberry, please come right on up. Uh, Mark Castleberry. Um, a lot's changed since we started this project in, uh, in 19. Um, a lot of learning, a lot of changes that we did not control, a lot of things I just learned through the process. Uh, as we got into this, I saw that uh, my level of experience and expertise was maybe waning, and I needed to, you know, I always said I try to surround myself with good people that make me look good. and so. In this instance, I saw uh, I started looking for a potential bringing in a potential partner on the project. Uh, Rise Partners is a group uh, that's done these type of developments in 28 states. A very high quality uh, group. Uh, been very very impressed with working with them. Uh, you'll see I signed. If you see the document, I've signed both sides of the agreement. I'm still the majority uh, in the development, but I, but they are coming in as a as a uh, equity partner. Uh, and so then, therefore, then the new the new trend, uh, new entity, but I think they'll bring a lot of value to the table. Um, again, very quality developers, and um, you know, again, their expertise has been. I've enjoyed working with them very much. 
Okay. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Castleberry, Mr. Carver? No, ma'am. Alderman Sistrunk? No, thank you. Alderman Little? No, ma'am. Thank you. Alderman Walker? No, ma'am. Alderman Bates? No, ma'am. Okay. Vice Mayor? <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am. Alderman Ball? Uh, you, you said one word, quality. I'm going to ask you about the quality. You said they bring good quality work, so that's all that matters. B very impressed with them. Thank you. Thank you. Do Thank I have you. a motion? Move Move approval. approval. Alderman Vaughn, I've heard a motion from you. Alderman Sistrunk, would you second. make yours a second? Okay. Make. All right. All those in favor, please sit. Ma'am, yeah, I just want, just want to reiterate, and, 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 and before the vote, can yes, I do, I'm going to support these. And, and I know I've not been supportive of, of Tax income and financing, I, and I just wanted to re this this project is a great project. This TJ Maxx is all in this shop, so it's going to be a great project to start. And, and it's one that has a, a lot of moving parts, and so it was complicated, it's complex. Um, Mr. Casper was able to put all those pieces together and make it work. I do going forward think that we need to be very careful as we look at the next project, and they are going to be coming in the pike, incentivizing um, retail businesses through tax and infant financing. And I'll remind everybody that TIFs were created back, I think, when I read back in the 1950s, for, in place to, to incentivize retail develop, or, or development in big cities like Los Angeles and Watts or South Central, you know, some places, bloody places where they needed to try to get uh, business to come back. But it's become a thing that you see in very fast growing and, 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 and prosperous college, you know, towns like college towns now. It's just become kind of the thing, but we, we, I think we need going forward to be careful and, and deliberative when, when, before we put out the word or we, that, that we, you know, if you come here, we're, it's, there's, there's a tip that's automatically going to be associated with a, with a big project. Um, city will incur some, once this thing's built, and I mean, it, make no mistake about the city, it, it, the, a lot, most of the, the uh, Avalon tax, and um, and split, uh, retail, I mean, the sales tax of this is going to be assigned to to uh, bond debt that will reduce uh, the capital expense on this project. City will incur expenses with this fire, police, streets. I mean, there's, there's general government expenses that will be incurred by this that, that we won't necessarily be getting. I mean, there'll be some new business come start, but also if businesses move from a tax paying entity to a business on this thing that's in this, in this subsidized project. The term is cannibalized. You, you move business once before you capture tax to one where you're not capturing tax. We need to be careful about that in the future. We, we need to really be careful and look carefully at what we do because it, it, the next folks that come, that next thing that comes in is going to ask for the same kind of thing. And we just, I don't think we should be in the business of incentivizing every retail project. This one had a lot of, and, and the, uh, Mr. Casper, this, the, the project over at the mill, that was complicated. Now, that, that, that was, you know, needed tax increment financing. But going forward, we're an SEC college town, and there's that, all indications, and y'all talking about a while ago about prosperity and stuff, there are people coming, there are going to be projects coming from everywhere that want to build here, and we want to welcome them, and we want them to build here, but when they get get here and get built, we want to capture some of that sales tax and, and that wrong tax, because we're going to need the money. And um, But uh, I plan to support this. Now, I yield. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. It's unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Next item is uh, the discussion and consideration of banned bird scooters from the city. Mr. Little, since this one is yours, I will let you lead off with right. it. Thank so. you, Mayor. Sure. We discussed this pretty much at length over at the uh, work session on Friday. And, Mayor, I've got a motion uh, tonight with a finding of fact. I move that the city ban and prohibit bird scooters and any other upright motorized public commercial scooter devices where individuals stand or ride from city streets, sidewalks, right of way, and any other public places effective immediately based on the following findings. The operation of scooters has endangered the health, safety, and welfare of the, of the scooter riders as well as cities walking, riding, and driving public. The scooters have been abandoned, scattered, and strewn, strewn about the city in an unsightly and unsafe manner that blocks the city's sidewalks, multi-use paths, and other public right-of-way. The use and operation of the scooters jeopardizes the mobility and safety of vehicular, bicycle, and foot traffic. Mississippi State University has banned the use of these scooters on its campus, and the city wishes to align itself with MSU for consistency of regulation. Okay. All right. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Sorry. Second. I heard Alderman Beatty first. All right, so I have a motion and a second, um, and discussion. And I will I will start because we got okay. 
Ms. Or Ms. Yes, um, I am. I understand the concerns. I certainly have spent a lot of time responding to Twitter feeds and to social media about them. What I will say to you is that I've also been in contact with the bird people, and they have been responsive to some of those concerns that I've expressed to them. They have geofenced off 12, and I have not, since they geofenced it, heard of anyone. I have, I have not seen any complaints about them being on 12 because when they hit 12, they can't operate any longer. Um, I have personally stopped and talked to the guy who does the scooters, and he is placing them not on the sidewalks any longer, but placing them adjacent to the sidewalks. So I think they are doing their very best to be responsive. Um, I think the nighttime issue may very well be, I did not ask him to make them uh, geofence, geofence wouldn't be the right word, but to, to stop them operating at night. So that was not something that's been asked of him. Uh, the, it is Mr. Blau who I'm in contact with. So. I, I do think um, I would appreciate it if we gave them a chance because I do think they're fun. I realize that somebody's going to get hurt, and and there it's just inevitable. It's it was inevitable when I was riding horses that I would fall off. It was in, it was inevitable that when I was riding my bicycle I would fall off. So I think some of these things are going to be things that happen. What we hope is that people um, can enjoy using them, can be can use them for transportation, which I also see. Um, I've seen them north of town, I've seen them south of town, and I do think that they are serving a dual purpose. Recreation being one and transportation being another. So I am in favor of them with some measured response to trying to keep them as um, safe as we can. Um, off Highway 12 again, off and, and um, from the higher speed limit areas such as Highway 12 or Highway 182. So. I, I am not necessarily in favor of that, not that I get a vote, but that I do get to express my thoughts about it. So there we go. Um, again, we'll start at the other end. Alderman Vaughn, thoughts? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like you. They do so a dual purpose for so many people, but uh, I mean, one that I've been seeing, they've not been parked on the sidewalk anymore. They've been parked off of the sidewalk, and people can get through and just say, hey, do they come through? They, they, they I, I think we need to give them a chance and just don't. Just don't just cut them out just like that, and I, and I think they're fun. I see a lot of a lot of kids riding, family riding. Them, you know, I think, I think they're fun. I am concerned about the helmets. They're not wearing the helmets. I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. But you got a lot of bicycle around them. They, they do not wear helmets either. So we can't penalize them for not wearing the helmet when the people that ride bicycle. And this is our audience that they should ride, they ride bicycle around should use helmets, but they're not. So. I just think we should look at it again. We shouldn't just ban them. We should do it with them. I don't think we should do that tonight. I think we should give them a chance. Even though we have one of the citizens come and say, just don't throw them away. And I, I don't think we should. No, I don't think we should throw them away. I think we should give them a chance. Like we give everybody else a chance. All right. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Are we voting now? Oh, no, no, no. This is, I'm, this is discussion. Uh, I'm ready to vote. I'm, I'll have a discussion. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Talk about this thing. Yes, sir. The police department's called in a query where state law doesn't cover the enforcement of the scooter, and there's a lot of misperceptions that we have within the public that motor scooter means a two-wheeled vehicle that has a seat. Uh, so when we talk about why are we not issuing helmets, it's because legally our first rule in law enforcement serves to know the limits of our, our legal abilities. And so it's imperative that um, uh, we get the relief um, in addressing the scooter with uh, the mayor, the vice mayor, and this board um, on some type of regulation that would be able to um, address it. And um, we have received, um, you know, as, as all of you have, as the mayor expressed on Twitter, a lot of stuff. I think from the frustration from our standpoint is Nothing about the nature of the men and women of the Starkville Police Department is unresponsive. In fact, uh, uh, we're hyper-responsive, and um, the frustration is a lot of misunderstandings concerning that, that we're not um, responding to uh, complaints. We're doing what we can, but we need some type of legal movement please, forward. Please, please, please. Yes, sir. Um, I mean, Mayor, 
these things are dangerous. If you put enough people on these things for enough, enough, in enough situations for long enough, and this is something new. I mean, we've had bicycles, we got cars, we got people walking the streets, we got cottages, we got all this. Now we got scooters, we got nighttime, and, and coming out of the grill of the night, across the four way stop, there's two two sets of couples that were done. Two, 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 you know, two sets of couples. They're double headed on these things. All I see is the headlight, and then there's a crossing four way crosswalk, and there's two, two young people, you know, on, on each one of these things. Um, the, the group using these things principally are younger people who have, are wonderful. I've, I've had two, two grown children, but at 18 and 19 and 20, some, it, you know, one of the things is having a lot is having fun, and, and, and sometimes the judgment kind of gets blurred into in the having fun part. And it's, it's a city government and it's people elected to make decision in the best interest of constituents and people come here and say overall safety our city sometimes we have to do things that are not popular but it's the best thing to do and in this this case these things are not being used i don't think principally for, for uh mode of transportation point a point b they're being used for fun recreation and it's just it's a new something when you ride them you're standing up you know, if, if you if you encounter something that slows you down, I don't know, curb whatever your 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 weight. I don't know, the, but the physics of it is, you're, you're you know, you're you're headed fault, you're going over front of these things. They're, they're just hazardous. Somebody without absent the the, the uh, requirement of helmets or something, somebody hits a curb, falls off one of these things at ten miles an hour, or something hits a curb, and we we put trash. And then and we'll all second get we'll all second guess ourselves about could we have avoided a tragedy by not allowing these things to, you know, banning these things, or by requiring everybody that gets on one to have a helmet on. I mean, uh, I mean, and I, I promise you the popularity of these things will go down if, if, if a person has to wear a helmet on to get on, if that's, if that's required. They're fun because you do you correct whatever you do, smartphone, rent one, and get on right then without any, and, and go. And um, it's, they're being used, and even if we restrict it from highways and stuff like that, those things can still get up and down University Boulevard and on side streets in such a way that they are going to put the riders a lot, and, and some of them will be impaired, but with alcohol, because oh, the, these things are central. These things are all being put in the, they're in the, the cotton district stuff, and that's one more motorized something that somebody's on, that's, and they're not going to run over somebody else necessarily and hurt somebody like a car or something like that, but they're going to hurt the impairment with alcohol means impairment with alcohol. And that means the, the judgment and the ability to, to ride and to use these things is, in, is impaired and goes down. I just think it's incumbent on us as a board to, to, to restrict or ban these things until such time that, 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 that we can put some stuff in place with some teeth in it that, that makes this, this stuff, this, these things safer, much safer and more palatable for, 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 you know, for people to use where, some, where we don't have this, I don't want some parent, parents to get a phone call from the police department in Stark, Mississippi about their child in Mississippi State, you know, one of those, one of those calls. And, and um, it, we're, we got to be the, the, the folks with the judgment on this. And I think that at this point in time, we need, we need to, to ban these things until we can come back and revisit and, and come up with some regulations and things put a little bit of teeth in it and make them where they'll be as safe as they possibly can be. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm going to be brief uh, and just say that I certainly understand everybody's uh, rationale in this and I think there's I think there's arguments to be made on both sides. I, I would I would certainly look for a measured response. Say, uh, you know, I'm going to talk about what I appreciate about the, the juvenile curfew that we've just passed is that there is some data. Um, and we're talking about a lot of things we've seen. We know a lot of people just ride them for joy. There's no real evidence. That's just what we what we think we see. And I think some evidence would you know having some data show that would would further that argument. Um, because if we we're really interested in making sure that everybody's safe, we wouldn't let people drive cars. Uh, that is the number one killer of transportation in the in the United States by a huge margin is people in transportation. 
The car industry has done exceptionally well over the years by not just making you want to buy a car to get to your place of work, but making you buy a car to take that Sunday drive or the freedom of the road. So leisure driving is always a, a part of it too. So um, I, I'm not, I think, that, I think these scooters have a, a place. I think they are new and uh, in, in every major metropolitan area is trying to figure out how do you deal with that. Um, but a ban in this is not saying a temporary ban. We're saying we're going to get rid of them and we're not looking at how we're going to address them. I think uh, maybe a, a different approach uh, might, and a, one that I'm, I'm fine with going either way, uh, the, next, the next board can make whatever decision they want to make, um, would, would be to look at a measured response and see if it's going to be certain areas of town where they're not going to be allowed. Are you not going to let them uh, use them at night? Um, I think the helmet argument is a valid argument, um, but I would also say it's probably time to remove the bike helmet ordinance from the bike law that, quite frankly, um, is not enforced. It's not required at Mississippi State, so if we're aligning with Mississippi State, let's not require a bike helmet. So I think there are a lot of different avenues where we can, can look right there. For, for tonight, I, I would like to see a measured response, but I certainly understand um, that I, and I completely agree that somebody is going to get hurt and there's a, a potential for somebody to get um, hurt very bad um, and the person that's going to get hurt is on the scooter and how they're going to get hurt is they're going to get hit by somebody in a car who's probably not paying attention that think they own the road when in fact the street is made for people not just for cars and if you're talking about a place like the cotton district that is highly congested and you have large trucks that feel like that they can drive 50 miles an hour between University Drive and Russell Street and have no recollection for the people that are going to be walking or on a scooter or on a bike. The issue isn't so much the pedestrian, the issue is the person in that vehicle that's not looking out for the other people that have every much as a right to be on that street. So I would, I would go for a measured approach, but I I'm, I'm understand the, the sentiment on both ways and I think it's valid. Alderman um, Little, anything further from you? No, I don't. All right. Alderman Sistro. I, I have noticed, just based on the initial discussions and your uh, cor correspondence with the, the company, um, already some improvements in, in how things are, are being operated. And much like Alderman Walker, I, I'm um, much more in favor of a measured response where we continue to have those discussions with the company, address hours of operations, address uh, lighting, regulating speed. Um, parts of the town that um, where, where, where these are acceptable and not acceptable. Um, look at the helmet piece of it if we want to. But I do think the company seems to be willing to make operational changes. And I do think that the scooters do serve um, a, a, a purpose, both, both entertainment and um, I know that Alderman Bond and I've talked and he knows people who use them for transportation. Um, and I have a very limited sample of people that I've talked to who use them. So um, I'm, I'm not tonight ready to outright ban them, but I would like for us to continue to, to um, work toward a, uh, um, a more improved operations um, with, the, with the company. Okay, thank you. Paul McCarver? Just like the juvenile curfew, this town often puts things on the books that we try temporarily. This is one for me that was a no-brainer. Uh, the, after the line bike episode, where, you know, in our town and gown relationship, Mississippi State University Legal Council immediately said no way to no scooters. When they rejected scooters from a liability standpoint, uh, look at the statistics, uh, much more dangerous than a bicycle. I, th I took that as a red flag. I didn't think we'll come back until a bird came back. Secondly, as a helmet ordinance standpoint, uh, totally unenforced as a city of Starkville. I voted against it, and in all honesty, until it was enforced by the police department, uh, I think that's a whole other separate issue in itself. Third is a total disregard for traffic laws. I have and can put up pictures of, them, of people with uh, infants and toddlers on their chest, uh, multiple people riding the same one. No one I've ever seen wearing a helmet unless y'all can document something otherwise. Uh, just basically a total disregard for traffic laws. I have never in my 12 years regarded uh, or received so many negative comments about one singular incident other than the bird scooters. Uh, it's kind of a no-brainer for me. I hate it. Uh, I think it is alter alternate transportation mode for the city of Starkville for some residents. However, we do have a smart bus, uh, wonderful sidewalk systems for most of the individuals who probably are fielding those same complaints, 
and they will find a way to have an alternative mode of transportation. Um, what I've seen is the fact that Star was probably not the city to be laid out for this type of transportation. We go to Nashville, we utilize them in Nashville all the time. Hundreds and hundreds of them around downtown, they're allowed on the sidewalks. If Starbucks if it's written and worded the way it is, not to be written on the sidewalks, my wife and I started riding around and just noticing there's very few streets that are actually would be acceptable for the use that they're within. You know, we're thinking of Lynn Lane and, and those kind of areas. Uh, it would make more sense to ride them on a, a large multi-use path, but if that's an outlaw district right beside that would be an area with no bike lane. So uh, it, it's hard on the rider, it's hard on the user to really know where to, where to ride them. I think most people want to abide by the law, uh, but then when they take them and they go into residential settings, uh, I just don't think that Starkville is the proper town. Uh, Nashville would be a better you know, acclamation for these type devices. So with that, I will vote against this tonight. Thank you. Okay. Well, I think we've everyone's had the opportunity to discuss it and make their views known. So I have a motion and I have a second. All those in favor, if you would please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, let's do it this way. If you would, <laughs> uh, if you would answer yay or nay as the city clerk calls your name. <laughs> Alderman Carver. Yay. Alderman Sistra. Nay. Alderman Little. Yay. Alderman Walker. Nay. Alderman Beatty. Yay. Vice Mayor Perkins. Yay. Alderman Vine. Nay. All right. By, by a vote of four to three, the motion carries. The um, bird scooters, I will notify the gentleman tomorrow, and we will Is it four to three or five to two? Sorry, four to three. Four to three. Okay. Uh, we'll rescind the uh, business license, I suppose, is how we'll go about that. So, anything from a wording standpoint, no, Mr. Blatter? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Next. No, ma'am. Okay. Um, next item is the claims docket. Do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Motion from Alderman Carver. Second from Alderman Little. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Vote five to two. Motion carries. Thank move, you. And move that, into closed session. Okay, and I have a motion to go into closed session from Alderman Little. Second. Have a second from Alderman Vaughn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we will be going into closed session to determine the need to go into executive session. If everybody.
briefed. Um, and at this time, I need a motion in this case to adjourn and to say goodbye to Alderman Little and Alderman okay. Walker. So I have a motion from Alderman Walker. Do I have a second from Alderman second. Little? I have a second from Alderman <laughs> Little. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, opposed? We are in adjournment. Thank you, everyone. Right. Gentlemen, thank well, you so much. Best of luck in the next four years. Yes, sir. Keeping it tight.